like to say that it is a self-help book for creative souls who do not read self-help books. It's kind of a weird book to be recommending to people because you, you don't want to come off like you're insulting someone or saying, hey, you need some ego management here. Um, so I've actually like sort of held off saying like, oh, hey, you might be interested in my new book. Uh, so I just say, you know, this is what it's called, this is what it's about. Um, and you know, and then so when I say it's like the NB ego management, ego management for creative people, people are like, Ooh. and so sometimes we're like, oh, that's great, and then you know we just carry on the conversation. And other times I, I feel like I've like I've, I've, I've snagged someone, and somebody's interest has peaked, um, and they want to know more, and I start talking about the different um, elements of the book, and and then people are like, yeah, yeah, can you more? Um, and so you kind of realize who can benefit from it just by who is most interested in it. Many of you know Camille as a writer of fiction. She has many novels. She's also a travel writer, which is her nonfiction. So I was really curious about this to see it sort of pop out of nowhere. And I was wondering about the precedent for it or what actually sparked this particular nonfiction piece for you. If you remember where it came from and how you decided to go for it, it came into your head as a book. So um, I had published two novels. Um, the second novel had gone out of print, um, which I know a lot of you know a lot about the publishing industry already. And you know that like this is kind of typical um, that there will be peaks and troughs in a writer's career, like any other career. Um, and but I I was finding it really really hard um, to deal with being out of print and having lost my publisher and um, being broke and basically feeling like a loser and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I did. It was a hard. It was a hard place to be in, um, and so I, I started sort of collecting things that were bringing me comfort and giving me a sense of okay, you know, you're gonna you're gonna get through this, um, and and sort of resources, but also you know, um, my friends who I could talk to, like Elizabeth, um, and she talked me through so many pinchy pinchy nights of. Um, feeling like you know this, like when you're feeling low, you have this tendency to feel like this is this is forever. And even though you know intellectually that it's not forever, like you'll get through it. Um, you know, it, to, to, to the next day will be will be better. You'll feel you'll feel better. You'll feel more optimistic um, about your life and your work and your career. Um, but when you're in the thick of it, um, and when you're feeling, you know, frankly, when you're feeling some pretty powerful feelings of self-loathing. Um, it can be hard to pull yourself out of that, um, but I knew that I, I could write something that would be useful, not just for me, because I was writing my own self-help book, basically, um, but I, I wanted to write something that would be useful to other people, um, because I think that when we make ourselves vulnerable and we share what we're really thinking and we can be really candid and really frank about what we're feeling, um, you know, the person you're confiding in responds to that and is really... Um, relieved to, to realize that they're not alone because hey, they're over here feeling the same things. Can you talk about the broader application of your book to people who are um, like, I'm a plumber? Yeah, that's a good question. We are all creative. Every single, and not just every single person in this room because we, we skew pretty heavily towards, you know, like most of the people in this room are writers and fiber artists and musicians and um, but it doesn't, it, even if you're not, like even if you, you know, don't identify as an artist, we are all creative beings. And I think that we need to embrace that innate capacity that we all have um, for, 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 for creativity. And, um, and whether you realize that you're, or, or not, you're creating your experience every day, you know, if nothing else, um, you know, you're creating every, every interaction that you have when you move through the world. So, um, so I think that that's, that's one of, I have so many main pieces of advice, but that's definitely one of them, yeah. to, to, to embrace your creative power and to step into it. Um, no matter who you are, anybody, anybody is, is a creative human being. working on the follow-ups to Life Bed Envy, which
which is a book about building creative confidence at any stage. So it's not just for young artists, it's for people who, yeah, people who are teenagers who are, you know, embarking on the path of an artist, or um, it could be people who are, um, you know, kind of switching gears in midlife. Um, I, I talk to a lot of people who are um, putting their art first again after, you know, decades of caring for, for their families and um, for aging parents in a lot of cases, and people are like, you know what, I've put this off long enough, or it's my, my writing or my, my art, my photography, whatever it is, has taken a back seat up until now, and, um, and now I'm going to put it first. Um, but then there's the, the question of, like, how do I validate myself after all of these years of, um, you know, sublimating my needs to, to, to meet other people's needs, um, my loved ones' needs. Um, so, so it's just meant to be sort of a confidence booster. Um, so I think this book doesn't won't have the urgency that like the has, um, but I think it's just it's going to be as important and as ultimately as possible.